Hey guys, I'm Ozzy Villain, and welcome back to our bid to find the best team in Major League Baseball history. And today we're in New York. It's my team. It's the New York Mets. As the 86 Mets go up against the 69 Mets, what I'm really looking forward to today is seeing how both these sides somehow find a way to lose. It would uh, just be a very Mets thing to do, wouldn't it? The good news, if you are a Mets fan and just finding the channel, we should see a Mets win today. I don't think they're going to be in their way for uh, both teams to lose. So, the 86 Mets went 108 and 54 in their regular season. The 69 Mets went 162. So, that's good. This is a one off game. We default to modern era strategy. Injuries are disabled. It's the World Series rosters. Let's go do this. Okay, so these are the two rosters with the, the season stats from their uh, individual season here. Uh, it's going to be Dwight Gooden versus Ton, Tom Seaver even. Uh, so let's go check the rest of the lineups. So, leading off the 86 Mets will be Lenny Dykstra at center field, Wally Backman at second base bats second, Kevin Mitchell at third base bats third, Daryl Strawberry of the Simpsons fame, of course, in uh, right field cleans up, Mustafa Wilson in left field bats five, Kenneth Hernandez, who I know from Seinfeld, uh, he bats six at first base, Gary Carter catches at seven, Kevin Elst Est Elster. Elster at shortstop and Dwight Gooden on the mound. And then for the 86 Mets, it is Cleon Jones in left field leading things off. Then Ed Charles at third base, bat second. Tommy Agee in center field, bats three. It is Don Clarendon at first base cleaning up. Jerry Groot, I am Groot at, uh, it's probably Grotte, isn't it? At catches at five. Bud Harrelson in shortstop, bat six. Ron Swoboda. In right field, bats uh, seven. Then Al Vice at second base is uh, batting eight. And Tom Seaver, as we said, is the man on the mound. All right, so here we go. Now, again, just an apology. I will mispronounce names. Unfortunately for me, um, I kind of miss both these teams. I just am a little too young for the 86 Mets. Um, the team that actually really made me fall in love with them was the was it 2000, the Subway World Series. That was the one. Um, I almost wanted to put that team in here just for my own benefit, but... You know, it, it's, it's, if we're, just in case <laughs> they were to win out. I mean, these are the two Mets teams, obviously, that, uh, I mean, 86, I think, is the one, isn't it, that is remembered probably the most fondly, but they were two up, two down so far with Kevin Mitchell coming up. And a 2 0 pitch, and that is in to right field, and that will be the first hit of the game. So it'll be Daryl Strawberry coming up now. And let's see what he can do. A 1 2 pitch, and Strawberry strikes out, and that will do it. So we will go to the bottom of the first. Uh, if you are just uh, discovering the channel as a Mets fan, welcome. Um, if you uh, if you like what you see, make sure that you uh, subscribe and ring the bell and all that kind of stuff. The basic concept here, very good catch from Strawberry in right field, is every franchise is going to have one team representing them. And uh, then we'll have sort of like a bracket March Madness style uh, knockout. And we'll find out uh, who is the best team. We're obviously in American League and National League history. And then we'll have a sort of a, a, an all-time World Series kind of deal. As Tommy Agee is going to hit into a double play. Yes, he is. So that'll do it for the first. One hit apiece. No runs. And we'll go to the second where Mustafa Wilson will lead us off. First pitch. And it is a ground ball to the second baseman. In comes Keith Hernandez. As I say, I only know from Seinfeld uh, as he's hit that quite well. But it's a good catch in center field. And that is uh, two away. And in comes Gary Carter. Now, he's, those attributes are very good for a number eight, number seven, I should say, hitter. A 2-2 pitch. And he sort of fights it off to the first baseman to end the inning. So we'll go to the bottom of the second. It is uh, Don Clenendon. Klen, Klen, I'm struggling with that one. It should be... It looks like it would be easy. Clen... It uh, drops in for a hit. Clenendon. Clenendon. Oh, it's an error out there. I was with Mustafa. Too busy trying to figure out how to say the name, and I've missed an error. So, uh, yeah, not Mookie's greatest moment. It is Grotte, or Groot. We'll just go with Groot. Sounds a, sounds a bit better. He uh, advances to run it over to third there, and it's Bud Harrelson now. Can Dwight Gooden do something with that? Oh, it's through the third baseman, and it is the first run of the game. It is an RBI single for Harrelson. And it is 1-0 to the 69 Mets. In comes uh, Swoboda. 1-2 pitch. That is a strikeout for two away with a man at first. And it'll bring up Alvice. 
And the 3-1 pitch is hit into center field. Is the runner going to get himself over to third? He's going to try, and it looks like he's going to get there. So with two out, runners at the corners, and Tom Seaver is the man to the plate. A 2-2. Pitcher versus pitcher, and it is a strikeout to end the inning. But not before. To be honest, one run was uh, not too bad there. That could have been a lot worse. It is Elster to lead things off, and he watches strike three. Dwight Gooden now. Pitcher versus pitcher again. It's an 0-1 pitch. And uh, Gooden gets himself a base hit. So a one-out single for the pitcher. Back to the top of the order with uh, Dykstra. A 1-2. Dykstra looks at it. And that is two down. And it is Backman who is 0-1 uh, today. It's an 0-2 pitch. And he has got that through. So it's going to be a two-out single. Gooden is going to try for third. Gooden is going to get there, I think. Yes, Backman gets himself over to second. And so Kevin Mitchell suddenly, two on, two out, with a chance to uh, at least tie the game here, and he's popped it up. And that'll do it for the top of the third. The 69 Mets still lead by the single run. And it'll be Clennon Jones to lead things off against Gooden. It is a 3-0. And it is a leadoff walk. Ed Charles. I find this funny because often uh, if I'm playing uh, like a, a franchise game off camera, I will choose the Mets because they are my team. So I know like and Gooden and, and Seaver, I, I recognize both of them from just uh, all the pitching, all the pitching categories and all-time records and that where they are. So um, yeah, it's nice to see them both in uh, in action. Though I've got to say, I didn't realize that. Uh, that Seaver as they stole on third. So runners at uh, second and third with one away for oh, this guy again, Clenanen. He strikes out. And uh, let's see what Groot can do. Big, big uh, at bat this one. It's a ground ball to the shortstop, over to first. And again, you've got to say the 86 Mets, they're dodging a few bullets here, aren't they? It could be a lot worse than 1 0 for them. And Daryl Strawberry will lead off the inning against Seaver. And rain is beginning to fall. A 1-1 pitch. I wish there was a way to take weather off, actually. Uh, I feel like that's sort of a, a, a variable that we don't really need. Uh, Mustafa Wilson, or Mookie Wilson, if you want to go by his uh, short name. And that is going to drop in for a one-out single. So going some way towards making up for that error. And Keith Hernandez will come to the plate. Now he is 0 for 1. It's a 2-1. Hernandez, is that going to get through just about? And we're going to have runners at first and second with one away. And it is Gary Carter. 0-2 pitch, and he strikes out. So that is 2 on, 2 out now. And they pinch hit. Uh, so Mazzilli is going to come into the game. A 1-1 pitch. And Mazzilli... Has he done it? It's going very, very deep into left field, and it's over the fence, and what a pinch hit that is. Mazzilli with a three-run home run, 370 feet, and the 86 Mets jump out to a 3-1 lead. Dwight Gooden now. One for one he is, of course. First pitch. Gooden grounds it to the second baseman. That'll do it for the top of the fourth. But the 86 Mets have taken a lead. Now, does uh, he stay in the game? No. So Santana has come in. And, um, well, that's not a bad impact to make, is it? Harrelson leads off the inning. That is popped up into center field. And that'll be one away. In now will come uh, Sawoba. I feel like I'm, rain's become pretty heavy. We've got a rain delay, rain delay, rain delay, rain delay. I wish I could just turn this off. And uh, an hour and a bit later, we'll come back for a 3-1 pitch. And that is through, is it? No, shortstop gets there for two away. And our vice now. One for one he is today. A 3-1 pitch. Two out, no one on. And that will be the end of that. So we go to the fifth. I've always wondered, uh, and I don't know if the game codes for it all, but if you were gone for an hour, like, you know, you're off for an hour, the starting pitchers, I mean, they've essentially... They've, they've cooled down at that point, haven't they? So I, I wonder if... Um, if actually, if this was sort of a real-life game, I mean, not that it would be a real-life game with these teams playing, but you'd have to take the starting pitcher off, wouldn't you? Or, or are they able to sort of warm up and go again? I guess it probably depends on the guy, doesn't it? 
as that is into right field. It should be caught. It does, and uh, that'll end the top of the fifth. All right, so Ken Boswell is pinch hitting, so that'll do it for Seema. It's an 0-1 pitch, and uh, it's a good pinch hit. Not as good as the 86 Mets managed, but it's going to be a uh, leadoff double. Nice throw out there from Strawberry as well. So that is, uh, like I say, a leadoff double, so none out, runner at second, and Cleon Jones to the plate, a 3-1. It's a walk. So two on, none out for Ed Charles now, a 1-0. And that is straight up, it should be caught by somebody. Third base looks like they've got it covered. And that is, uh, that is one away. And a Gee will come in now he is uh, what's he over two today it's an 0-2 pitch as well is this going to be a strikeout yes it is so two out and it is Clenanen who is one for two a full count and there's another strikeout and Gooden is uh is getting it done isn't he he's he is you feel like just forcing his luck a little bit now Kuzman is coming onto the mound he's going to face Daryl Strawberry he is 0 for two what can Daza do that is a ground ball to the first baseman, 108. It'll bring up Mukstafa. Full count, one out, none on. And that is a walk. That wasn't even close. <laughs> it looked, uh, it's the sort of pitch you probably dream about, isn't it, on a full count? Just don't let it be close. Just You just you either want it to be straight down the middle, so you, so you know, well, an obvious strike, so you know you've got a swing, or you just want it a mile away, so you know you don't have to. It's the close ones that are the... They're the killers, aren't they? Carter. What's he? He's 0 for 2. A 1-1. One, one. And that gets away, but not far enough. So everybody will stay where they are. And it'll be a 2-2 pitch. And that is a strikeout to end at the top of the 6. So it is still 3-1 to the 86 Mets. And it is Bob Ogier, uh, Odeja coming up to pitch. Groot is on the mound at the plate, I should say. And it's a first pitch swing. So they've taken good and off. Yeah, so Gooden is done. Did they pinch hit, or did, did I miss that? Which would be something I would do. Um, no, he's in the pitching slot, so no. Uh, Harrelson comes in now. So it was a really good start from Gooden. Can the bullpen go on with it now? It's weird. One thing I've noticed, sort of, as I've played through here, is the older teams, are, are, are sort of on average, they tend to have the really good starters. Uh, I'd say a, a fairly sizable starting pitcher advantage over the more modern teams but the bullpens of the old teams and probably because how many times you see a uh, complete game shutouts and whatnot back in the day they the old bullpens are rubbish whereas the more modern bullpens are much much stronger as uh, that should be out at first to end at the bottom of the sixth so i think i think these teams are probably both on the precipice of either either side of it where where things start to start to make the the shift over as that is going to be a leadoff single for Santana. And I think that was his first at bat in the game, wasn't it? Because he came in for the pinch hitter last time. So we've got another pinch hitter now, Tim Tufel. One on, none out. And that is into left field. And it might even get its way to the wall. Now, I don't think it's going to score a runner from first. Throw comes in. He's going to try. He's going to get done at the plate, is he? No, he's not. And it is a probably scored a double. And he's scored a double for Tufel, but he's found himself at third. It's an RBI double. It's 4-1. And there's none out. Dykstra to the plate. 1-1. And that is going to be caught. Now, is it deep enough to score the runner? Um, again, we're going to try for it. And again, it's going to get there. So it is suddenly 5-1. It's a four-run game. With one out in the top of the seventh. Backman, who's one for three. A 2-0 pitch. Backman into left field. That should be caught. And that'll be two away. And it's Kevin Mitchell now. One for three he is today. It's a first pitch swing. And Mitchell has grounded it to the shortstop. And that should be stretching time. It is 5-1 to the 86 Mets. All right, welcome back. Sid Fernandez is on the mound now. And we've got Wayne Garrett pitch hitting at the plate. And let's see what we get out of this matchup. First pitch. And that is sliced away into left field for a leadoff single. So another successful pinch hit. You've got to say both teams making the most of their pinch hitters here. Clennon Jones is 0 for 1. It's a 3-1 pitch. Clennon Jones into deep left field, but it's not deep enough. 
And it is caught out there by Mustafa. And the runner will go back to first with one away. Ed Charles comes in now, two for three. Ed Charles, he's a bit of a legend too, isn't he? That name sounds familiar. I don't know if it's he's played uh, in, for another team that we've seen. Maybe he has. Anyway, we've got a stolen base there. It's another 3-1 pitch. And that is going to score a run. I would have thought runner is rounding third, going home. It's an RBI single to make it 5-2 in the bottom of the seventh. Runner at first. One out. Tommy Agui to the plate. He is over 3 An 0-2 pitch. A ground ball. Oh, and the third baseman. It probably wasn't a double play, but it would have been close. And suddenly there is two on, one out, and Clennon at the plate. He is one for three. A 1-1. One, one. That is into right field, and Daryl Strawberry is there. Oh, love those sidebirds. All right, it is two on, two out for Groot. It's a 1-2. It's a ground ball to the second baseman. That should be that. Up to the third base. To the, what's the court? Shortstop. He throws it to the second baseman, and that'll do it for that. To the top of the eighth, it is Tug McGraw. There's another great name. It is Daryl Strawberry to the plate. He is 0 for 3. It is an 0-2 pitch. And Strawberry strikes out. And that is one away. Mukstafa to the plate. He's 1 for 2. Another 2-2 pitch. And Mookie up the middle. It gets past the second baseman. It's a one-out single. All right, Keith Hernandez, he's one for three. It's a 3-0. Hernandez draws the walk, two on, one out. And it is Gary Carter, 0 for three. It's a 2-2 pitch. Oh, he watches it. So that is two on, two out now for Rafael Santana, who is one for one, having come into the game late. That gets away from the catcher. So runners will go to second and third now with two out. Santana could just about put this game away. It's a 3-1. And he loads the bases with a walk. So it's the pitching slot next, I think, isn't it? It is. So it's a pinch hitter, Howard Johnson. Good power attribute. What can Tuggy do? First pitch. And it is very, very deep. It's going to be the first Grand Slam we've seen. And that is a good night to the 69 Mets, surely. As Howard Johnson pinch hits his way to a 9-2 lead. The second time the 86 Mets have pitched hit a home run. And that, as I say, is the first Grand Slam we've seen. Carl Kuntze to the mound. He's going to face Dykstra. It's a full count. And Dykstra into deep left field. That is... Oh, good catch. He's killed himself in the fence house. He's gone through it. But it is 9-2 on the back of that Grand Slam. And Doug Sisk. Will lead. Uh, will come onto the mound. I should say. Harrelson will lead off the inning. He is one for three, and it is a 3-0 pitch. It is a long, long, long way back for these 69 Mets. The only thing in their advantage is that they are playing another Met side, so there is still a chance for them. A 3-1 pitch. Is that a double play? One, two, and that is two down. Our vice now. He is one for three. It's a 1-0 pitch. And there is a ground ball to the shortstop. Over to first. And that'll do it. So we go to the ninth. It is 9-2. And the 86 Mets surely just need to close this out. Now Backman will lead them off. He's 1 for 4. It is a 1-2 pitch. And that is in 2 left field for a leadoff single. So Backman has a 2 hit day at the plate. It brings up Kevin Mitchell. He is 1 for 3. It is a 3-1. And it is a walk. So two on, none out. Are we going to be padding this lead here? Strawberry now, who is 0-4-4. Full count. And Strawberry, not, not bad enough to go 0 for 5. It, well, that should have been a double play, shouldn't it? Runners at the corners, one out. Mukstafa to the plate. He's 2 for 3. 2-2 two, two pitch. And there goes Strawberry. They don't contest it. And uh, you'd think they would have, although he is quick. So maybe he just got a good jump. Full count. And a loaded bases situation again. We saw this in the 8th and ended in a Grand Slam. What can Keith Hernandez do? It's an 0-2 pitch. Just put the ball in play, mate. And he does. And it's going to be a double play, is it? He's not the quickest. <laughs> Just strike out next time, Keith. You would have been better off doing that. So that does it for uh, for that. And it'll be Doug Sis continuing out. Art, even Shemsky will come to the plate to pinch hit. 
It's a 1-0 pitch. And he has got a hit. Did, I think every pinch hitter got on base, didn't they? Unless I'm, I'm probably forgetting somebody, but it feels like every pinch hitter got on base. Clennon Jones now, who's over two. It's a 1-1. That's up the middle. Into center field, and that'll be a single. Runner will stay at second. Seven runs is a long way back. Ed Charles, three for four. What a day he's had. A 2-1 pitch, and Charles, that could be a double play that essentially ends the game. Two out, runner at third. And it is Tommy Agee, 0 for 4. Is this the end of the 69 Mets? A first pitch swing. Agee grounds it to Santana at shortstop. And that'll do it. The 86 Mets will advance to represent the franchise. So really, it was, I mean, it was two hits, wasn't it? A grand slam, a three-run home run. And that was the difference between the two teams. So... Maybe the scoreline flatters the 86 Mets a tad, but uh, they look very, very good. Let's hope for my sake and all else Mets fans out there that they go deep into this competition. We can see everybody else that has so far qualified. And next up, it is the, I, I forget who's up next, Philadelphia Phillies. I can't actually see what's behind me on the screen just now. I think it's the Phillies up next. Uh, so join me for that one. And uh, yeah, if you, uh, if you haven't yet, make sure you like the video. Subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you next time. Take care.